Hi, I'm Cynthia Schiller. Please like and subscribe. Uh, this is a viewer topic uh, that I'd like to respond to. Uh, this person has said, I, by the way, may I ask how long that I've been narc free? Uh, because they said it seems that I'm doing pretty well. Um, and they asked for a video about it. So uh, you're welcome for all that I do. Thank you for that comment. Um, so how long have I been narc free? This is a, a kind of difficult question to answer because uh, uh, I don't even know. I don't even know when the exact cutoff was because um, we had done the off and on stuff, trying to understand things. A lot of things were hidden and he had promised me a future. This is the second one I dealt with. Um, and so I was in that stupid stage where I just, you know, didn't quite understand there are certain circumstances that made it difficult, but the ghosting uh, was horrendous. And then the coldness, I didn't know if this guy was alive or dead. Um, and we we're like off and on, off and on. I'm in a different state, so I moved back. He's trying to get a new house, um, given all these excuses. And we live across state too, so it made it more difficult. Plus, he worked and on and on. Um, so we get back together ish, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and then I get ghosted again. And it was just this really weird pattern uh, caused a terrible trauma bond. Cause every time we were together, like we never argued, it was really nice when we were together. Um, but the in-between was horrendous. And we never really had our chance to fully develop our relationship because of across state, out of state. Um, he was going through a divorce, all this stuff. Um, so anyways, we uh, had a beautiful summer last summer. Um, and then he's engaged. So how long have I been narc free? Um, years, <laughs> one year. I don't know how to answer that. But um, my first relationship took me over 20 years to get over this person. This one, um, I am doing better and I want to address that. Um, but just yesterday I was crying. You know, I was crying. I started getting upset the day before, um, have some issues with my daughter. Um, and then also you, you, you struggle with these things. These uh, rumination thoughts come into your mind. I went swimming um, and then I get mad. I get mad. Like him and I never got the chance to go swimming. We walked in on beach once, but there's so much that we didn't do. And that's hard on me um, because I feel like he doesn't know the real me and he discarded me, um, ended up finding somebody else. Uh, but what helps me is knowing the psychology of it, because looking back when um, I was having all these phone calls, usually they're just messages on his phone. Um, I'm explaining all these things like this is what you're doing. And I know... I know the psychology behind it. And, you know, um, when you guys are thinking about the new supply, you know, you, you, I, I'm angry. Uh, he has a beautiful house, a boat. Um, they go on trips. Uh, seems like the perfect life. Um, but uh, it's not the perfect life. Uh, he, he has said to me before that he doesn't love like other people do. Um, is she better than me? He actually got a good person. But is she better than me? Remember, narcs are in kind of a childlike state. Do you remember being in elementary school? Um, maybe fifth grade, you started having crushes on people. And that was your um, reality, that elementary school. Either uh, sometimes it might have gone into junior high or some of you just didn't care till high school. But I started liking boys when I was 10. So fifth grade. That's, that's a realm of who you're going to pick from um, or have a crush on. Not necessarily date, but you know, I fell in love and we dated for 20 days, never even held the guy's hand, didn't know what dating was. But a narcissist is kind of like that, where they don't go outside the box. All those kids in that elementary school, it probably wasn't the smartest kid in the world. It probably wasn't the best looking kid in the world. Um, it was just, that was my little focal point on what's available. So the narcissist with these new supplies, they don't go searching for the right person. They go searching in a very small cluster and they'll just pick the best of what comes when, when it's available. Um, we try to heal, we grieve, uh, we get confused and try to figure things out and the narcissist moves on. Um, they don't have the depth that, that we do. Um, and what helps me heal 
like I said, knowing the psychology, doing things, even though I got a little upset um, when I thought about swimming, that was just, a, I, I had to get that out of my head. And then I just enjoyed the water on my body and seeing other people and getting out in the fresh air. Um, today, I have a friend uh, coming in town um, and her and I, uh, it rained today. We were going to go to the beach, but she's spending the night and we're just doing girl stuff, just having fun. So reconnecting with friends. I hadn't talked to her seven years or something. And uh, this summer we reconnected and like she's such a good kind-hearted person and somebody to talk to somebody who understands somebody who's real um I, I also don't move into relationships just to be with someone that's not me um that to me depresses me if i go on a date and i don't really want to then i get depressed over that um so i'm not ready for that i'll go um on dates but it's not a make out date it's not a kiss date it's not a, a hug snuggly whatever it's just as if i was going to go out with a girl it's just they just happen to be men um and i also do that with females i'm just going out um and they know what's up they know it's just you know we're just going out that's it um and i'm enjoying life again conversation um it's almost like i got into this mode where i don't know how to i mean i can talk to people but it it helps uh seeing what's out there i went on a mud bogging thing um which i've never done before and just seeing how how other people camp what other people do uh the little things that they do um to make it's special. Uh, it gives you ideas on, on things that you want in your future. So you have to go through the five stages of grief. One of the things that helped me a lot um, is YouTube. And I'm, I am not joking about that. Uh, it's the research that I have done. Uh, it gave me uh, validation to everything I was saying. Because I blew his phone up like crazy. I said a lot of stuff. Um, you know, I had said, you know, it, uh, I don't just like, you feel like you're dying. Um, uh, you know, you're like, I just, you know, I don't care what you say. I just, you know, basically acknowledge me. We wanted validation and the silent treatment and just everything. Um, you know, it's, it's not my fault. It is not my fault. And I know that I'm also pissed, which I have to not be pissed at myself. I have to struggle not to be, but you know, I could have chilled a little. I didn't have to blow his phone up. So I played the part in it, um, but it would have eventually happened anyways. The narcissists uh, go through a cycle and I know that cycle is gonna happen again in the future. Um, I look back at the things that he had said um, about his ex-wife and, uh, you know, she, I guess once she had said, um, they used to both smoke cigarettes and he stopped and she got upset that he wouldn't smoke with her. And she's like, there's just another thing we don't do together. So in my mind, I know, uh, that, you know, he wants to do his own thing, which is fine to some extent, but she was kind of saying like, we really don't do anything. And that was like her, her amount of attention she got let's go have a cigarette and now that's gone i mean it's kind of showing how minimal the person uh will spend time together um to where that was like her happy spot in a sense um so i struggle i struggle i'm not gonna lie to you guys uh the first one 20 years 20 years i was uh three weeks before the wedding, he canceled it, uh, wanted to postpone it. And I moved out because uh, I got scared. Um, but looking back, like during our custody battle, he, it was so abusive. Um, I've done other videos on that. Uh, but the healing process takes time. You have to get out there and do things. You have to reconnect with people. Um, I'm not completely healed. I am not completely healed but I know the red flags um, and I see them a lot quicker because people uh, off of Facebook are kind of hitting on me or just out in, in public. Um, 
but I, I nip it in the bud quick. Like I don't even give them a chance if, if uh, they're breaking boundaries. Like I had one, uh, I never met him. He wanted to meet me across like mid state kind of meet halfway. And I'm like, I don't even know you. Like I haven't even talked to you. So I said, I'd prefer to talk first. He, he just wanted to meet me. Uh, so he, he didn't take the time to talk to me. I told him what I wanted, like, at least let me talk to you, because I'm not driving across state, half state. If I don't even know if I like you, you can kind of tell if there's a cadence or an interest. Um, and, uh, you know, you kind of ask, like, why you say you like me, you don't even know me, you see my Facebook posts. And if they say something like, oh, you're pretty, well, looks only last for a while you know do you, do you know anything about me you know and then they'll um try he was always asking about uh you know if i'm going to kiss uh when i on the first date like when i first meet him i'm like i don't even know you how am i going to say yes or no um so it was like he's trying to secure something sexual like a kiss, maybe he was hoping for more. Um, I'm not going to tell you yes, because then I feel locked in uh, if I change my mind. Um, that was just a red flag. And uh, so then um, I had another one who uh, would instantly uh, like try to connect with me, somebody I've never met. I had a costume business, so I accepted a lot of people on Facebook as friends for marketing reasons. Um, be selective on who you select, otherwise you're going to get these random people. Um, but he uh, sent me a message and then it was like two, two and a half hours. And then he's like, uh, you could feel this attitude where he's like, uh, I don't stay friends with people who don't respond back. I'm like, dude, for one thing, it's only been two and a half hours. I don't even know who you are. Uh, I'm busy. I teach. Uh, I work, I'm a workaholic. That's another thing too. I am a workaholic. Guys need a topic you guys want me to talk about. I will do it. I love to teach, but also with you guys, try not to do that too much. Um, I need to uh, back off on how much I work as well. Um, because uh, it's kind of a, a comfort level. In, in a way, it keeps me busy, but I'm missing out on the connections with people. Um, you know, uh, I have said that, uh, you know, I am doing better. I feel uh, bouts of like energy and the real me and the happiness. Um, you know, a lot of people have mentioned, like I do, I smile a lot. Um, who I am as a person. Uh, I, I want to get back to that. I'm a very vibrant, happy, outgoing, uh, confident person. But I, I, I kind of isolate a little bit. And I, 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 I feel the brain damage that was done. Um, it, it's still something I'm rewiring in my brain. I watch some of my videos. I say, um, too much. Like I'm struggling. Uh, I feel a disconnect in my brain. Um, see, there it goes. <laughs> I, uh, uh, my, my neighbor is helping me fix my car. So I, I do have brain fog. So, uh, he's helping me fix my car. I'm paying him for it, but, um, he's got a DUI, so he can't drive. So he wanted to stop him. Taco Bell, get his kids something to eat. He was nice, bought me something. Um, and then we went to the pet supply store and then uh, to AutoZone. Um, but I kept, first I went to Burger King instead of Taco Bell. I, I know the difference. Uh, and then I made it to the pet store, but then right across the street is AutoZone. I started going the other way. And it's like, I need to make my brain think because I was so brain fried from the damage. I was so brain fried. Um, I'm still recovering from that. And it's like, I'm really smart. And the way that the narcissist has damaged my brain and staying in two long-term relationships 
and then the long-term rumination with the first one. Um, the second one, uh, I, in a sense, have a relief that he's getting married. Um, it's kind of like my freedom. Why try? Why try? You know, uh, it helps to understand, to know, you're not going to know what the hell is going on in their brains. Um, because uh, how, how do you, we love, we love. How do you tell somebody you can't love? Like if, if uh, you're like me, you hear about um, these child abuse cases where, you know, they uh, are putting cigarettes out on the kid or um, I don't know what they would do make, to punish them, make them touch a hot stove, uh, things like that. Like, how do you do that? I can't wrap my brain around how a person would think that's okay. So it's kind of like with a the narcissist, they can't wrap their brain around how do you have empathy? They don't have that part in their brain. It shrunk uh, psychopaths. Those are the ones who have no empathy. Um, and knowing that, uh, you know, looking back, um, the weird cycles, there were times it seemed like, I was cared about other times I knew I was a joke to them. Um, you know, uh, heed warnings from people sometimes because my first one, uh, was a state cop and, uh, his wife, uh, I'm sorry, my ex was a state cop who had a state cop friend whose wife babysat our daughter. And she had told me, uh, you know, that, mine had told her husband you know kind of like he's keeping me around to get custody of the kids a kid and um there's warnings i went through four custody battles uh if you guys are going through custody battles make sure you document stuff um but how do you heal you take time for yourself you believe in yourself uh try not to get mad at, at god or the universe or yourself because I'm going to relate it to, um, I was a gym teacher and during COVID and I needed knee surgery and my 98 and a half year old grandfather was passing away. Both my parents, um, had issues and, um, over, over time, you know, I had moved back from Tennessee to take care of my dad after his leg amputated. Um, but I was a gym teacher. It was an easy job. I loved it. It was great. Uh, but to take care of like my grandpa and not wanting to bring COVID around the family, um, I ended up leaving that job. And, uh, you know, I was kind of like, should I have done that? You know, um, I'm starting a whole new uh, school this year. And sometimes you're like, I want to go back. I want to go back to that school. I have teacher friends um and a comfort you know where the classrooms are how the things pan out um but i'm making fifteen thousand more a year by going to the next school i would have never taken that blessing if if certain things in life didn't happen uh that school is owned by a company that's a, a public charter school so i left without giving two weeks notice because if I went back I'm risking getting COVID possibly and bringing it to my family so it was, I had enough time for quarantine and I needed to take care of my family so that's probably kind of a crappy thing of me to do but that's what I did so they said at that time that you can't come back if you do this and I said I understand um but then I get an email from them uh inviting me back so uh, I go through, you know, getting my uh, CPR certification again and this and that, and I'm investing money. Um, but then, you know, I was proactive and seeing what else is out there. So whatever you're doing now, see what else is out there, because there are bigger blessings than going back to something. Um, you know, sometimes when we miss our ex, we think that they were the best. But I mean, look at all the abuse you went through. That's not the best for you. And there are other things out there, just like my new school year. 
um, going to be an art teacher. Like I, I find it a blessing, um, you know, whether it was gym or teaching art, I could teach anything, but I chose what I wanted. I wanted something to where I was a third grade teacher. I've taught seventh, eighth college. I've taught everything, but there's a lot of extra work that goes with that. And I made a conscious decision to add on the PE endorsement, um, take charge of your own life. Uh, Cause that's how the only way I was able to get that job is if I put on that endorsement. I also uh, knew what was important to me is not to be grading papers all the time or the pressures um, of academically how the kids uh, performed because that can affect my pay. Um, so with art, I'm going to encourage them to do the best that they can do. And it's not going to affect my salary They're I'm going to make sure they do the best that they, they do. I'm going to do my job the best I can do. Um, I, I made a decision, uh, to take a leap and I, I did challenges. Um, I added on a psychology endorsement, a health endorsement. I like to learn. I like to teach. And it feels good to, you know, pass those tests. I did them first chance. Uh, a lot of other teachers uh, don't always get to pass the first time. Um, I'm taking time for myself. I'm building myself up, the glow up, um, you know, getting back into exercising. I, I had knee surgery, so it was hard on me, but uh, I love tap and hip hop. Um, I, I take adult dance classes, do things that make you happy. I'm roller skating again. Um, it, it feels good at 52 years old to get out there and, and do things that the young people do. Um, and it keeps you young, keeps you active, uh, uh, releases uh, chemicals in your brain, like oxytocin. Uh, you've heard of those runner highs where uh, it gives you a little boost. So instead of being down in the dumps, um, we're training our brain how to be happy. I talked about uh, the vagus nerve. Smile a lot. Because uh, when you're frowning, um, it, it kind of tricks your brain into depressed mode because of that vagus nerve. So try to smile. Uh, when you're out in public, um, you pass people, smile at them. When you're just sitting at home, you're not, you're not really smiling as much as when you're in public. Um, be proactive in healing. So I am doing better and I feel those waves of relief, that wave of Cindy Schiller's back. Uh, but it, it's still sporadic. There's still ups and downs. And that's part of it. It's, that's just part of the healing process. Um, it does get better. It does get better. And I'm just focusing on living life. Focusing today instead of every time uh, I, I think about the past, it makes me sad. But how much of my life was taken? I don't want any more of my life taken by this narcissist. I want to live my life. And sometimes we don't know why things happen. That email from that school inviting me back got the ball rolling for me to reinstate my CPR, da, 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 da. So I'm thinking I'm going back to this school. That started the ball rolling, but I still did uh, research and applied myself to other schools just to see what's out there. And because of that email, because I had told them I wasn't coming back. Um, and then I've been teaching online. Like, I don't have to go back. I am going back to in-person teaching because I love kids. I teach kids online, but I need some interaction with adults um, to where, you know, if I go to a bar, um, you, you, you do get hit on, but sometimes they'll latch on to you. Uh, you try to get away. Um, I, I got to learn how to talk to people a little bit better. Like, you know, it was nice. And this is where it gets tricky because if I walk away, I'm kind of like, 
moving on, you know, where I'll be polite to the person. And for me, it's really hard to say, look, I really won't, I want nothing to do with you because I'm not rude like that, you know? Um, but it, it, it stifles uh, meeting people because either people are uh, latching onto you when you want to just have a nice conversation or just kind of work the crowd and see who's out there, get to know people. Um, so at schools, you can, or wherever you are, you can maybe, uh, somebody can suggest somebody where they know what that type of person is because we need to kind of filter through some red flags and uh, it's a scary dating world out there. Uh, some people are extremely violent, but I just know, just like with that school scenario, the process is unfolding. Sometimes we don't know why things happened, but the outcome for me was better. And I'm looking forward to life, what lies ahead. And it, it just takes time when you're fed up of being sad and you're going to start to enjoy things. Um, it's hard. It's hard. But you're going to start to feel that wave of you coming back. You're going to start to feel that. And uh, that's the most exciting part of all this is it starts to happen. It starts to happen more and more. And it's like you're almost over the rainbow. You're almost to where you need to be. So just keep chugging along. Keep learning. Learning was the biggest thing. Um, and the way my mind works, I love to learn and pass it on to others. So it's giving me that opportunity to help you guys um, and build a community here. Help each other. You know, um, let's validate each other's feelings because unless you've been in a narcissistic relationship, people don't really understand it. But here you can see that people have been through the same thing. It wasn't your fault. You're not crazy. You weren't the narcissist. You might've done some reactive abuse, but when we're abused, we get caught up in the moment. Like if you're punching me in the face over and over, um, theoretically, analogy wise, uh, punch me, punch me and punch me. I'm not going to stop and think like, hmm. Should I write a note explaining how I feel? Should I say, please? Should I talk in a bold voice? No, we're going to react back and uh, punch back to save our lives. And that's what it's like as an analogy in these relationships, you know, we get treated like crap. I felt like I was dying because it's doing brain damage that I can feel. It's fucking with my heart because you can die from a broken heart syndrome the way the um, aorta separates like you could die and and you feel it um that we get so desperate that we blow the phone up and we beg and we have to stop we have to stop and think that we have to fix ourselves we have to fix the situation they're not going to be there for us and we go back to them it's i've done the analogy before where if, if my leg is broken, that's what I want to fix. But like my dad uh, had his leg amputated. There's no fixing his leg. So he can either sit there uh, and bandage it or wash it. The leg's toxic for him. The leg was toxic and he had to cut it off to save his life. So we don't just have a broken relationship. It was a toxic relationship. And out of all the videos I've done, I think that's the most powerful thing I've said. My dad's leg was toxic. He would die if he kept it. Our narcissist, if we keep them, it's toxic. It's not broken. It's toxic. So big hugs to you guys. And uh, I am doing better. I am doing better. I'm not stuck like I was when I was younger. Um, I'm, I'm realizing that we play a big part in our healing process and being around other people helps and take the time to grieve, but learning really helps. So feel free to ask questions, share with each other so you guys can validate each other's feelings and it does get better. So thank you for that question.
and I'll see you in the next video. One-on-ones are available. Please like and subscribe.